Example two. So I'm going to compare two different ways to invest your money. I have done both of these things. Okay. The first one I regretted. The second one I am clicking my heels in joy with. Okay. And I hope by the end of this, you're going to be like, why do they make these calls? This is an outrage. Mr. Greenlaw, thank you. All right. So let's say that the bank guy calls you and offers you um, an option for investing your money. Let's say you have $1,000 that you haven't touched in about five months. Who knows why, but it's sitting there and the bank thinks it would be a good idea for you to put that in a interest accumulating investment. Okay. So they suggest usually when, it, when they're talking about investing, they suggest GICs. If they're talking long term, sometimes they suggest mutual funds, which are also a really bad idea. But sometimes they, they suggest suggest GICs, especially if you say something like, yeah, I'm just saving it for like, I don't know, a few years, I want to buy a car or something. They'll usually suggest a GIC because they think it's a good short-term investment, which, nah, maybe, maybe not. I don't really think so. Anyways, do you guys know what a GIC is? Just really quick. Mm -hmm. What's a GIC? Guaranteed, in, guaranteed an investment certificate. Basically what it means is, here's you, okay, and your thousand dollars, okay, here's the bank, okay, you take the thousand dollars and you put it in the bank, and then you wait a certain period of time, like my clock, yeah, you wait some time, and it'll grow at an interest rate of like, lately it's been really, really low because of the economic crash in 2008, it used to be like 9, 10%, back in the 90s, okay? Now it sucks, which is why I'm really mad at this, okay? Um, when I did this, it was like 1.5% every year. So what they do is they take 1.5%, add it on to $1,000, the next year they do the same thing, and then the next year they do the same thing, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's what a GIC is, okay? So after the first year, you have 1,000, what's 15% of 1,000? $1, $15? Sorry, not 15%, 1.5% is $15, right? So after the first year, they add $15 on, and you get 1015. The second year, you start with 1015, and uh, you add on 1.5% of that, which is, what is it? What's 1.5% of 1015? Uh, 15 again. <laughs> Be a little more specific. 15.225. 15.225, so not that much bigger, 15.23 we'll say. So you end up with 10, what would that be? 10.30.23, okay, after two years. And then the next year they take 1.5% of this and add it on. That's what compound interest is. They're not basing the interest on your starting amount. They base it on the last amount that the interest was added to. And it's a very, very powerful mechanism in investing. It's what makes long-term investing worthwhile because this number can get gigantic depending on what your interest rate is. Okay, So let's say that you had a GIC at $1,000 growing 1.5% compounded yearly. That means they just calculate your interest on a yearly basis. Okay, That's that C that I was talking about in that formula, remember? Okay, So C would be 1 in this case because they calculate it once per year. Okay. What's that investment worth after two years? Okay, well, it's this, right? We just calculated it. What is that investment worth after N years? Okay, so if I looked into the future 40 years from now, 50 years from now, how much would it be worth if I just left it alone? Okay, using that formula that I showed you guys before, where I had A equals P times 1 plus I over C, the power of n times c, remember that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. A, we're just going to leave alone because we want to know that's that's our accumulated value after a certain number of years. P, our principal is 1,000, the, the, the amount you put in. I, your interest rate, as a decimal. So it's 0 0.015. Compounding period, how many times do I calculate the interest every year? Once, so it's just one. Okay. All to the power of n times one. Okay, so for a more simple 
construction of that formula. It's 1.015 1 to the power of n times 1,000. Okay, I just added these two terms in the middle here. Okay, so graph that thing. You tell me. Tell me some amounts that you have after 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. 40 years, 1814. So 40 years is 1814. Mm -hmm. Okay, 50. 50 is 2105.2. 2105 2105.2. So after 50 years, your money will double. 50 years, your money. Hope you got that, okay. 60, although you probably won't hang on to it that long, but just for the sake of argument. 2443. 2443. Okay, and so on. You get the idea? Yeah. That's what the bank usually suggests. That's the first thing that I did. I did it for two years, and I made $30.22, or $30.23. Guess how excited I was about that. Yeah, I was, I was mad, because I was like, how am I going to like live in retirement if I make 30 bucks a year and if it takes 50 years to double my, my, uh, my investment? That's, that's stupid. I could make more money shoveling snow or breathing air. Maybe not, but... <laughs> it would be a really good way. Okay, option number two, what smart people do, okay, which is a little bit of a biased statement, but I really believe in this. Um, so if you were in my religion class last year, I talked to you guys about index funds. You guys kind of remember that conversation? Okay, I have continued investing in those index funds, and to today, I have made $1,800 since I started investing, Okay. Ah, way better than 30 bucks. Mind you, I put in more money because it's smarter. But let's just compare both of these scenarios on a more fair scale where we put in the same amount of money. There's a typo there. It should be a $1,000 at an interest rate of 8%, okay? Not $100. Even though I'm pretty sure $100 would still kick $1,000 GIC in the face, okay? Let's look at the other option. So we have an index fund. Originally at $1,000, 8% interest rates, compounded yearly. Okay, let's set up this formula again. P in this case is still 1000 I is 0 0.08 this time. C is 1 still. And so I have 1,000 times 1.08 to the power of N. Okay, so let's compare some values here. Tell me, how much is that thing worth? After 40 years. Yeah. Actually, go, go to, just go to like 20. Start at 20. 20 years. Tell me how much that thing is worth. 4,661. Okay. Already it's kicking your GIC in the face. Okay. Four, uh, 30 years. 10,063. Oh my goodness. Oh man, that's one of these. 40 years. <laughs> 21,725. 21,700. Remember, you're not doing anything, okay? 40 years ago, you just gave the bank, you just gave the bank a thousand bucks. 40 years later, it's worth that. Okay? You get how awesome compound interest is? Okay, 50, which maybe is a little unrealistic, but what would it, what would it, be, what would it be worth? 46,902. Holy cow. Just a thousand bucks that you didn't do anything to. And just you just it in for like... 80 years is 4. Okay. Like just look at these look at the difference between those two numbers. You look at the graphs, right? The one the one's going like this. Okay, pathetic. The other guy's like, "Yeah, I'm awesome." <laughs> okay, they, they should start at the same place actually. <laughs> okay? This value right here, this guy right here makes a huge difference. Right, 1.5% may not seem that different from 8%, but in terms of compound interest, that's a massive difference. Okay. So again, this is just you putting in $1,000. You're not doing anything to it. You're just leaving it alone from now until you retire. Holy cow. Imagine how much powerful that would be, how much more powerful that would be if you actually put in a continuous amount of money every month.